Just a quick check-in with our sponsors before we get started with the podcast today. So this podcast is sponsored in part by Brandhoot, a Rochester company developing websites and apps that move people forward with a blended approach of strategy, design, and engineering. Find out more at brandhoot.com. That's B-R-A-N-D-H-O-O-T dot com. I'm Amanda Leitner, and welcome to Rochester Rising, where we amplify the stories of Rochester entrepreneurs. So today we listen in to the second and final part of the latest business experts series organized by Winona State University and Collider Coworking. So today we listen in to the second part of the talk from local user experience design expert Ahmed Makawi talking about products and services. Who are you designing them for? So on the podcast today, wrapping up this very insightful talk, Ahmed discusses how to take the whole user experience into mind when designing a product and service, especially to take in regards the the user's environment as a whole and to ensure your product or service is a good fit uh, for that environment. And he also wraps up talking briefly about the discovery and framing process of user experience design, where you listen and capture all the voices of your users and start to understand how to build a solution that your users want. So listen in to the second part of this talk with Ahmed Mikawi. And then the next thing to, to talk about is just thinking about the way technology has changed. So if you think about um, video rental stores that were all over the place, you know, not too long ago, really. And then, and then all of a sudden you have... Um, Netflix that could send you the disc, right? You know, they're meeting you where they are. We just had a conversation about this at work not too long ago, is how both the technology and our, um, our attitudes towards these services change, right? We had no problem going to this one store that let you rent movies to bring back home and you watched them and rewinded them or watched the DVD and, uh, and, <laughs> and it was more scratched than it was when you got it and that sort of things. And, and then Netflix said, Forget about a store. You are watching them at home. We'll send them to you. You know, we'll we'll charge you an amount that is okay. You know, if you don't get it back to us for three months, you know, that's fine because we built that into the cost, you know, across the board. And then you send it back to us. All of a sudden, you had this huge technology shift, which let you, you know, the the internet speeds what they what they got to. Now I don't have to do that. You know, I can save a lot of, as a business, I can save a lot of money because I'm not losing as many DVDs and I, I, I can just serve it up once on a server and you can watch it whenever you, you want. I'll give you 24 hours and you can stream the, the thing and you don't have to rewind it and all this. So that sometimes you'll make the decisions on where your product or service is, is going. Sometimes technology and, and things like the Alexa will, will make it for you. Right, and, and how it interacts with things. We still have situations at home where you know, we'll be watching a movie and the movie will have uh, an Alexa in it. I think we've had this a couple times recently where you know, somebody in the movie will say, Alexa, what's the weather today? And then my Alexa you know, sounds off and starts answering the question. Like that, it, it's, a whole new, it's a whole new set of challenges. <laughs> but, but the user experience, and that's why I bring that one up or add it, is your user experience always goes beyond the medium that you designed it for. And you have to think about that, right? So whether it's you're, you're designing a, um, whether you're Tesla and you're designing this electric car, that's fine. It's an amazing car, but you have to think about the whole environment um, that's around it. And the fact that not everyone around you is driving an electric car, or once you get back home, you know, you drive it into a, a garage that was built in the 30s and maybe doesn't have access to, um, uh, to you know, 220 volt um, plugs. So what do I do in those scenarios? Always think beyond the, the product or the service into the whole environment that the user is engaged in and the distractions that they face and and their daily interactions to make sure that it's a really good fit um, for them. So what that leads us to is what do you want to do? Let me check the time because I don't have a clock. Oh, okay. Um, so because we're ambitious, it's another, you know, uh, for some it's, a, it's a, definitely a human trait, is this is your market and here's your product or service. What do you want to do? Do you want to take a wedge of the market, right? Like I want to be, I want to take 20% of the, the real estate industry market with this service or product. Or do I just want to create this one product and I don't really care where it, 
where it fits in. I just I just want to build my you know my thing and I, I want to sell it in the marketplace. And the difference is this, right? Because this is the market, it has so many other players in it, and other people will likely have come up with the same idea or working on the same idea that you are. You really have to spend the, the time, not a whole lot of time because you don't have that, that much, is spend enough time on the front end of things designing a product that, will, that you believe will be used and will be competitive against you know, the, the next person out there that has the same concept and just as easily can, can build it out. You know, um, they say, you know, it takes money to make money. You know, if they have a million dollars, they can come out with it tomorrow. But that doesn't mean that it's the best one out there. And that's the, the beauty of the, the market the way it is. Um, it's something that we ran across all the time with, with products and services is, yes, we have big competitors, and I, as one person, could never, you know, uh, push the product out in, in two weeks, right? It might take me two years. But if I put the time into really doing that user research and the experience research, I could still win, or I could get their attention to where they, they want to invest in my service or they want to, uh, to pull me in. So it's, it's kind of, again, that big picture. It doesn't have to be unique. It just has to be planned out with the user in mind. So here's what I propose, not what I propose, this is um, what user experience would propose, right, uh, as far as kind of bringing it all together. Discovery and framing, which is a part of the deep dive course, um, and we'll go through like the sticky notes and, and all the, um, the different parts of this process, but it's called discovery and framing. Right. Discovery is that first part that we talked about is really listening from is capturing the voices of the users and going wide and then coming to a point of what we call inception point is right here. When you listen to all the stories and you get all the data and it, and it seems, let's say this is two or three weeks into this process, you've heard a lot of things and, and it's in an Excel sheet or a, a Trello board or paper. Um, you get to this point and now how do you boil it down? Right, and so the, now you're looking at quantifying and pr and creating those personas we talked about, and that bring, starts to whittle it down. You've um, the, we call this problem prioritization. Is we really dwindle it or boil it to a point of inception? And what I call inception is now I've done the homework, and I think I have a, a validated or invalidated parts of this problem that I'm trying to solve and this product that I'm trying to build, and I can go back to a stakeholder or my team and say, I've done the work and I really think this will win because Charlie says this and Jill says this and this is the, the persona that, we, um, that we're targeting is this size population in the US or in the state or even in my city. We can really do some, some amazing things with this product or service. Framing the solution is how am I gonna build it, right? And, and that's kind of part of the, the, the next um, course that, that I'd like to do, but it's, it's now we have to build the, the thing, right? So we, now we know who the user is or the customer is. Um, now, how do I build it in such a way that addresses what I found out, right? And then this is one of the most important parts of this is iterating, right? Um, it, it used to be that you were okay figuring out a, a problem or a product and then we designed it and then that's fine. You know, you just have the same TV for six years and it's, it's okay. What you find now is we're not in that world because we're, I don't know, is this shorter attention span? I, I don't know what it is, but you need to iterate so much faster than you ever needed to before. But the nice part is if you plan for it up here, then you're not redesigning your whole product to service. You're just, it's small things. Right? If, I, if I designed a playground and it's amazing, um, but, but I can focus on a piece of it, you know, like this uh, bench area, I need to iterate and make that more comfortable for, for the parents that are bringing their kids there, for example. Um, or if it's a lawn care service, like there's, there are things that you can iterate on um, to keep adding value to your product or service, which keeps increasing uh, the, the use or the use case. Um, so that kind of that continued user research is really important, um, and and one thing that gets missed often. So with that leasing application, for example, we did all the work, uh, we built it. You know, the development team built it out, um, but it's 
going to need continued research. You know, we take now that we have those personas, now we really want to dig into um, what what would you use an app, if we were going to add a functionality in there, for example, that would track your, um, I don't know, track, uh, it seems like uh, package theft is a big issue at, at uh, um, you know, rental places now. And so if I want to really focus and add a unique value add feature um, or service to renting an apartment, what might that look like? Would you log into your app and maybe see the, uh, the packages that you were expecting to receive that day, for example? Would that help? And what does that look like? And so it's a small lift at that point. You're not redesigning your whole um, application or product. So that's that. So that is what I prepared for you guys. So now we just open it up to questions, I guess. Yeah. Thanks. All right, so that wraps up this two-part talk, talking about products and services. Who are you designing them for with Ahmed Makawi? So for the first part of this talk, tune back into episode 116 of our podcast. So to wrap up today, we wanted to talk about a few things. The first is that after trying three times, we were unable to hold our listening session talking about mental health in the community uh, due to weather. So at this point, we are not going to reschedule this listening session. It just seems like it does not want to happen um, at all. So if this was an issue that was very important to you, if you um, want to help bring forth uh, pain points, issues, um, related to mental health facing our entrepreneurial community, or you have some thoughts around potential solutions um, in mental health programming that could be provided for our entrepreneurial community, please take a few moments to fill out our survey. So I'll provide a link for this in our show notes, but it basically will just give us some insight into what uh, pain points and tasks uh, you're trying to accomplish in your everyday life, especially in regards to mental health, and help to bring to light some potential solutions around these pain points that could be developed. So take a few moments. Again, I will put the link for that in the show notes. Another thing that's coming up in March is Women's History Month. So last year in March, we did a Strong Women Creating Value series where we profiled four different women in the community who were creating real things of value um, for our local ecosystem here. It, they didn't have to be creating something for the business ecosystem, just our community as a whole. So we're asking you um, for your nominations for this year's Strong Women Creating Value series, which will come out in March. So if you know a Rochester businesswoman creating something amazing in the community, please consider nominating them to be featured in this Strong Women Creating Value series that will launch in March for Women's History Month. So if you have a nomination, send that name to us at rochesterrising at gmail.com. So send us their name and just a real brief description of the value that they're creating in the community. So again, send those nominations to rochesterrising at gmail.com. And we'll have that in the show notes as well. All right, that's a wrap for our podcast today. Please subscribe to us on iTunes so that you never miss a story of entrepreneurship and innovation coming out of Rochester, Minnesota. And we'll see you here again on Wednesday for a brand new episode.